now through the miracles of modern technology. Zany Worldwide Banner featuring Tom, Michelle, and Jim in an on-topic, off-topic free-for-all. Welcome to the Gun Talk After Show. All right, we're now in the after show, the part where we, well, actually, I don't even know how you describe this. I got Michelle, I got Jim, I got me. Guys, what? Why do we do this? It's fun. (laughs) It's fun. (laughs) What else do you want to talk about for four hours? That's right. We we do this because we just can't stand to go home, or maybe it's because the people at home don't want us to come home. I'm not sure why. They changed the locks on me. I think they're trying to tell me something. It's, that's, that's the whole deal. It's going, I don't know what's going on here, but we're going to do something. Oh, I want to talk about cybersecurity at some point, but we'll, we'll get to that in a few minutes here. There's a, it, it actually is going to make sense. There's a, I'm going to circle back around. We're going to get to cybersecurity and guns there at some point. But I do want to take uh, Michael's call first because he's been patiently waiting for us, and I appreciate uh, your patience, Michael. Uh, in Fresno, California, how are you, sir? I'm doing good. How about you? Excellent. Thank you for calling. Yeah, I, I was just calling in. Uh, I heard you on the radio. I heard that you wanted to talk to people that were um, not fans of guns. Sure. Yeah, uh, I worked security for about six years and so, and uh, I never chose to work with a gun. I I, mm-hmm. I started a organization, and what we do is we make um, non-lethal weapons. But right now, we only do it on video games. You know, digital video games. We make non-lethal weapons, but but we've done okay. it. You know, invented weapons that would like nets that would catch people and animals and stuff. And right, I just I just kind of want to know what you think about that. Like from switching from a firearm, which is very volatile explosive with a projectile to you know something okay well harmful. let me ask what kind of what what kind of security did you do uh, just uh security guard is what the title was it's just like where uh protecting places and people and different things and stuff depending on well, the where? location you're working at we're talking about re- retail person. out re- retail or sporting events or what like fairs and stuff like that and like uh Yosemite when there was a fire, just things like that. Okay. Um, and, and did you have the option of having a gun, or was there no option of having a firearm? Uh, well, they told me to get uh, a license to carry, to carry in public, and I, I did, but I never chose to work with the firearm. I passed all the tests with flying mm-hmm. colors, but I just didn't prefer to work with one. Okay. Well, I mean, it's certainly it's a personal choice. I'm just curious how you came to that position. If I, I guess the question is, obviously, what was your plan if you ran across somebody who did have a weapon and wanted to hurt you? Well, see, that's where my organize. Well, not mine, but the organization would come in. We we biologically engineer um, different plants that are helpful to humanity and. Uh, one of these plants that we biologically engineered gives us a very lightweight, uh, very, very strong material that can withstand um, projectiles at high velocities. Michael, are these bulletproof leaves? Kind of. Well, not, not kind of like that. It's it's kind of scientifical, but pretty much to simplify it, it makes it easier to have the plant grow it <laughs> than from the original method right. from where it came. And, and, and Michael, you're in California, right? Yeah. Why am I not surprised? Um, yeah, so uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm just uh, kind of I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I asked you what was your plan if someone attacked you, and you said you're going to grow a plant that will stop bullets. <laughs> and I'm saying, no, you, you have two seconds to do something. This person is going to kill you or going to kill somebody you're supposed to protect you have two seconds. Just, what are you going to do, Michael? What are you, what are you going to do, Michael? You're just, just going to let them kill you. That. Really? And, and wait, but, but aren't you supposed? You're security. You're supposed to protect people, right? Yeah. So how are you, you? So how is it protecting people if they you just let them get killed? Well, you take the bullet. It, it, like I don't. It depends on the situation. Like, but a, but, but after weapon, they kill you, then they're going to kill the gone. other people. Wait, no, no, no. It, it, this is not about you. If you're supposed to protect people and you're a security guard, and you say, "Well, I'm just going to let them kill me." Then they're going to kill the other people. So you didn't do your job. So how well, does that work? Like, how are you a security person? Open, if they catch me in the what? open and they have a gun on me, 
there's not too much I could do about it. Like you said, in two seconds, what would I do in two seconds? There's not even enough time to pull out a weapon. So really? like you said, I would just sure I would die. Well, to be literal, in two seconds, there's no, you would, I'd hear the gunshot and I'd be dead by that time. Michael, you really don't know anything. You really are just like the most clueless person I've talked to in years. It's not no, actually, difficult at all to draw. No, no, wait, wait, wait. It's not difficult to draw and fire multiple shots in two seconds. I do it all the time. Well, yeah, my dad's name is Quick Draw. He, he's real good at that kind of stuff, but I'm... Your dad's I'm, name is I'm, Quick I'm, Draw. Okay, I'll tell you what, Michael, look, uh, you, got, you got to go get some more fruits and nuts, dude. I mean, what can I tell you? It's You're out in California, and... Thanks for call. Appreciate it. Have a lovely bulletproof tree leaf thing life. I gotta get some of those magic beans, dudes. Uh, yeah, he have, obviously <laughs> has growing experience of plants in California. I would think. I did not think of that. <laughs> you know, you're always ahead of me there, Jim. I did not think of that one. Wow. Not not being. Oh, wow. wow. I mean, just holy smokes! Wow. I like. I'm into the whole bulletproof leaves thing. <laughs> I would like to think that there was just a setup and he's just, just put, tugging our leg. That would be great. But Michelle's shaking I'm her not, head, too. And I don't I'm not it. so sure. <laughs> okay. okay. You know, but, but honestly, there's the whole, assuming that any of that was true, and it may all have been bogus, okay? Mm. But if any of it were true, I would go to the whole idea of a security person who's unarmed who simply says, well, then I guess I'll just die and everybody else around me is just going to die because I am unwilling to do anything to stop it other than maybe plant a tree and see if we can grow some bulletproof leaves. Well, it's kind of amazing from that aspect to think that that person could still retain their position as a security officer of any sort when they're not going to carry any type of weapon. Well, you know, of course, a lot of security positions, they don't, not only do they not give them guns, they will not let them have the guns. They prevent them. From having guns, which is, you know, that's no security at all. Right. I mean, it goes against what the job is. <laughs> you know, pardon me while I provide my own security. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot, a lot of security smokes. work is, is image. You see somebody there, well, let's go rob someplace else. So I, I understand. theater. Yeah, I, I understand that aspect of it, but oh, I hope you can grow a plant I am gonna, in two I, seconds. I got I got to get me some of them bulletproof leaves, though. I got to do that. That's, that's, I know, I'm, I'm there. That's, uh, I am one with the environment on that thing. God, God oh bless my God! I, I need I need another caller. I got to I got to flush oh, this out. Hey. Line two, Ma- Matthew in He's... Metairie, Louisiana. Matthew, help me out. Global warming. Can we grow some bulletproof leaves with the global warming? That's what I want to know. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say no. <laughs> Get back to us, will you? <laughs> Uh, all right, Matthew, you you win. Sure. You got the you got the best response of everybody, Matthew. That one worked. <laughs> The only thing I can think of in nature that can resemble bulletproof is spider web, and I, I I can't see how you get enough of it to make a bulletproof vest. Spider Man, Spider Man, you man, you can do it, Spider Man. But that is that was the strangest call I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to top that, except I, you were talking about big game hunting, mm-hmm. and I remember the story I heard on Russia's show about some global warming researchers that were trapped in their cabin by polar bears, which were supposed to be extinct because of global warming. And <laughs> the only thing I thought of when I heard that show was send in the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, the polar bears were actually trying to get into the cabin because they had air conditioning in there, and they were and trying look, to get where it was Yeah, they were looking for sunscreen, I think. So, ah, this is, thank you for correcting my, oh my. ignorance. I do appreciate that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, all righty. Uh, so, oh, Matthew, I got a, uh, you still there? Yes, I am here. Where are you? Question, question for you. <laughs> Well, that's one of those existential questions, isn't it? <laughs> it certainly could be. Math, uh, in Metairie, uh, shooting ranges. I just had a call from a guy this morning. We helped him get his wife a gun. She used, she had an incident, and she was a little bit afraid. So we got her uh, some training first, and she picked out the M&P from Smith & Wesson like that. 
called me this morning and said, I want to take her out, and they live in New Orleans. So my question for you is, I don't know, but are there any ranges that you could recommend in the New Orleans area that somebody could go to just to do some shooting? Uh, there's one in St. Bernard uh, in Araby called the St. Mm-hmm. Bernard Indoor Shooting Range. And then there's the, uh, it used to be called Jefferson Indoor. Um, I can't remember what the name of it is. It's the end of Hickory. The only other uh, indoor shooting range uh, in, it's the only other shooting range, period, on this side of the lake. Okay, uh, and there's nothing nothing on the North Shore, uh, North Shore of Lake Pontchartrain at all. It, it's just nothing well, out here. There's well, there's fits in, in Slidell, that's true. Yeah, and then there's well, there's, gravel pits there, somewhere around in Covington. Yeah, there are several gravel pits, but they're all uh, privately owned. But uh, you know what? For somebody, if they're in Louisiana, every state has a an online group somewhere. In Louisiana, you'll go to Bayou Shooter, singular, bayoushooter.com, and you can find out where to go there. Matthew, look, I appreciate the uh, the global warming, and I really, really appreciate the response of the day to that caller. That was pretty much the best. Uh, thank you, my friend. You stay safe. All right, Jim. Um, could you give us, like, uh, maybe 10 minutes of talking about uh, bulletproof leaves? Well, dude, like, m- <laughs> maybe, dude. If I no, chose no, to, Mike, like Mike, Michael goes, ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's a classic. <laughs> Jill, I got nothing. You're, you're the <laughs> hey, no, no, you're the you're the call screener. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> what do we? <laughs> We're all looking at Michelle going, uh, actually, that, I love that. That was great. You just you never know. That's one of the fun parts about doing a show like this. You never know what's going to happen. And on the upside, it didn't make it to the broadcast version. <laughs> that's why we held him over to the after show. I, you know, I had that little, shall I say it, spidey sense going. Uh, <laughs> it said, no, we're not going to put him on the air. I don't think so. And I'm sure he's a nice fellow. I'm sure he is. Uh, I don't think I'd want to depend upon him for my security. Depends um, how much time you have. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And then, you know, well, there's nothing you could do in two seconds. Really? Here, let me send you a video of Max Michelle or Jerry Mitchlick and yeah. uh, Rob Latham. Drawing and shooting and eight I'm, rounds in 1.4 seconds or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, Jerry Mitchlick draw, uh, shoot six shots. With a revolver, reload a revolver. Six more shots with a revolver in three seconds. Yeah. Are they okay. looking for a security so. job? I know where there might be one available. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> well, there it is. So that, it was kind of fun. So there you yeah. go. All right, Python, pythons. I just guy just sent me a note. He says, "All right, so if not a python, what would you carry for the upcoming zombie apocalypse?" Uh, and you know, my response was. Uh. <laughs> for the transcription could you spell that please got nothing uh i don't do zombie apocalypse it's uh i, I never did get that whole thing did you guys get into the whole walking dead zombie thing no my kids did i've i've seen like the beginning of a segment and the end of the segment but from what i've heard and read they're every segment's basically the same they're there's a stockpile of something they need to get, but it conveniently is surrounded by zombies, so they have to shoot their way through it and get to next week. And the zombies that's are just still like present. Going to the, right. Yeah, that's, but that's just like going to the grocery store around here. It's not not a big deal. You know. It's, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I did see there are some interesting looking movies. We went, without giving the name of the movie theater, went to the movies recently. And uh, interestingly enough, they're inspecting the contents of the women's purses. There's no no gun sign anywhere, but they're looking in the women's purses. And I think, what did you say they were lo- actually looking for, Jim? Juju bees and M&Ms. They don't want you to bring in any uh, concessions that uh, they didn't sell to you. If Michelle were in there, they'd say, oh, cool. I said, what, what, is that a diamond back or is that a python? Or what? What is that? He said, well, no, that's in one side. The Diamondback's in the other side. That, that's a J-frame. I said, oh, I think okay, we'll just cool. ignore those snicker bars then. You can go on by. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Have a nice day. <laughs> that's right. I got milk duds, and I'm not afraid to use them. <laughs> oh, goodness.
goodness. Oh. Goodness. goodness. <laughs> oh, but there's there's several shoot 'em up movies coming up. Um, it is interesting. I think the movies have gotten better in their portrayal of firearms use and handling and, and shooting and all that, don't you? Yeah, I agree with you. I think there's been a lot more training probably on the side of actually shooting a firearm. I mean, you could watch a movie years ago where the person pulling the trigger was the worst flincher, eyes closed person that ever happened. And for some reason, they always managed to hit their target dead on. But, you know, I, I do think it's gotten better and probably because so many people have complained or made remarks about such instances and they and they had to. They had to get better. Well, yeah, that and there's so many videos available everywhere now. Yeah, I was going to say that, that you know, and, and then, of course, people are make. and you're right, on just on websites, people make fun of this stupid gun hand. You know, in the old days, you could see people, uh, the actors would pull the trigger and then they would provide their own recoil. So they would yeah. basically yank the gun upwards. Right. <laughs> the, the hand gun up. To provide their recoil. That was always fun. Well, something that hasn't changed in the movies, at least the movies I've seen, which is few and far between, uh, they may be better with gun handling and shooting stances and techniques and way to hold a firearm and such. They're still not better when the victim gets hit with a 9 mil and he's driven back 35 feet through a plate glass window into a bulletproof plant outside the window. If yours don't do that, you're just not pulling the trigger hard enough. See, <laughs> See that's the key to everything right there. I'll work you on really that. want to hit them. Yeah, you got to work on Yeah. Well, I, I want to see no. a meth head get shot 37 times and still come charging at the officer like happens in real life. Now, what we really like is the one where you shoot them and they, like you say, literally fly through the air and slam against a wall. Yeah, right. And you're going, okay, that would have taken like the impact from a Chevy or something <laughs> to knock somebody right, with that. Right. And, and, oh, yeah, that whole equal and opposite reaction Newtonian thing. So if there's that much energy going out the front, there's also that much energy coming in the back. And so if that were to happen, it would actually blow you back that far, too. Well, see, then they weren't that unrealistic with their made-up recoil. <laughs> well, you may be right about that. Puts things in perspective. Circle back to that. <laughs> well, that's right. And then we have the, uh, still in a lot of the training places I go, they still talk about the full Sabrina as a ready position from Charlie's Angels, where you basically have the firearm pointing upward into your nostril <laughs> as you walk around you know, the corner of the, uh, the building. So they call that the ready position. You've got the half Sabrina and then the full Sabrina. <laughs> so. Okay, who was the cutest one of all of them? Kate Jackson. Yes. Absolutely. Well, yeah, duh. It all depends. Do you, are you, you know, brunette blonde thing, but no, yeah, Kate Jackson. Intelligence. Clearly. She was intelligence. She was the brilliant one. Is well, it matter? Then Is we're it supposed to matter? <laughs> well, then it's Ginger or Marianne, so yeah, I don't know where you go. Why did they not have a gun on that island? That's what I want to know. And where did all those people come from they kept meeting on the island? Gone just to the other side of the island, they would have seen the resort that was over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> these are the things I think about when you guys are not here. <laughs> we should visit more often. <laughs> <laughs> this might be a good time to take a break uh, while we gather ourselves. Okay. <laughs> take a quick break. We'll be right back. The 100% American-made Ruger American Rifle is now paired with the 100% American-made Redfield Revolution 4-Plex Rifle Scope. Making it an American icon in rifle scope package offer. The Ruger American Rifle with Redfield Revolution Rifle Scope maintains all of the features of the full-size Ruger American Rifle and also includes a Redfield Revolution 3 to 9 by 40 Rifle Scope that offers resettable stainless steel finger-click AccuTrack adjustment. The Ruger American Rifle with Redfield Revolution Rifle Scope. Another American-made product from Ruger. Ammo can be expensive and hard to find. No problem. Train at home with the Score Time Laser Trainer Target from LaserLight. Use the Trigger Time Laser Pistol and you can train at home with scoring, timing, and shot display. No matter the weather or ammo availability, you can train at home and have fun with this laser training system from LaserLight. To see more, go to LaserLight.com. That's LaserLYTE.com. All right, we're back here with the after show. Um, I had something happen. I was actually in the movie theater. I was talking about going to the movie theater. And I was going to bounce this off of the two of you. Uh, the gun I was carrying at the time, and you know, I 
switch around because I'm traveling and we have different guns we're working with different manufacturers on and different holsters. Mm -hmm. It did not have a laser on it. And we were sitting in the far back row, basically with our backs against the wall. Not a bad position to be in from a security standpoint. But I'm looking at the exit door, you know, the down Tunnel. one side or the other in the theater. It basically, it's a place where people can exit uh, way down there by the screen. Yeah. Is it like the dark, thinking, dark okay, tunnel? The, well, no, in this case, it was just a door, quite literally a door okay. uh, with an exit sign there. And I'm thinking, that's probably 35 or 40 yards, 120 feet ballpark. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, and I can make that, in the daytime, I can make that shot. And I had two flashlights with me. I knew that I could light up the world. But you're still relying on iron sights and a flashlight. And I was thinking, if I had a laser on this gun that was sighted in, I know I can make that shot. The only thing preventing me from making a shot of that distance is the difficulty of using iron sights in a low-light situation. And I was thinking... Hmm. You know, more and more, I come around to thinking a good laser is just not even an accessory. It's as important as having a holster. You know, I just want to bounce that off of you and thinking, you know, in a situation like that, I'm thinking about the movie theaters where the guy comes in the exit door down at the bottom and wants to start shooting up the place. I know I could hit him from anywhere in the, the room. I could hit somebody from 50 yards away if I get the sights on him. What's your thoughts, Tom, with night sights, just having night sights on your firearm? I've had them on a lot of guns. Um, Honestly, I've become less and less a fan. I mean, not that I'm negative on them. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just that you still have to have a light to be able to see the target. And then when you have that much light, I'm not sure that they, they're, they're helpful. But you still have to line up the front sight and the back sights, the back sight, and you've got to... Make all that happen while you're trying to look at the threat, and the further away the threat is from you, if he's like at six feet, it's one thing. But if he's at fifty feet, it's further. And if he's at one hundred and twenty feet, which is not an unthinkable distance to have to shoot for those who are going, oh, I wouldn't, there's no reason to shoot that. You'd have a hard time justifying that. No, if he's shooting at me, I have no problem shooting at him. But any distance, whatever right. it is, at that distance. Pistols are actually pretty accurate, aren't they, Michelle? I mean, the, when oh, you yeah. if you put them in a vice, man, they shoot well. Absolutely. I mean, anybody that's done any kind of testing with their firearm off of a bench can testify to that, you know, and and going out and shooting the distance, I I think you have to. But I think to get to the point of what you're saying, too, and kind of playing on words, but with a laser, you're kind of locked in on the target. It is in the direct sight. It's in the direct laser path. And you know what you're pointing at as long as it's sighted right. in properly. Well, the other thing, too, is that you don't necessarily know, Tom, that you're going to be able to line up your sights and be able to be looking down. But you may have to shoot around a corner or something with iron sights, night sights. You're not going to mm-hmm. be able to do that. With a laser, if you got the dot on them, that's where your bullet's going to go. Yeah, I just it's a real simple deal. And, and a laser is a heck of a lot more convenient than carrying a vice around with you. <laughs> it's a little table to put it on. Holster, well, yeah. They have to mean, go in her me. purse. <laughs> Smash those Snickers bars. <laughs> here, here, honey, would you uh, take this vice with you, please? Sure, not a problem. I gave up cigarette smoking go. years ago. No, not that vice, there, honey. There go the milk duds. <laughs> All right. So, well, and I think that's part of the what if scenarios that everybody has to go through in life. Like, where do you want to be? What do you want to rely on? There's so many products. There's so many colors. There's red. There's green for different light situations and and eyes. And in all honesty, as we age, eye focus gets harder and harder to do. So you you tend to lean more on those products. And I think they're out there for mm-hmm. a great reason. What's that like? Is that tough, Michelle? Do you have it there? <laughs> I'm yes. not, not looking no, forward no, to that. At, no, ask me. I can tell you about that. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, and it's one of those you're thinking, oh, yeah, it's, it's never going to happen to me, except mm-hmm. that it happens so gradually you realize, yeah, I'm just not seeing as well. Now, I will say this. For those who are, when you hit 40, somewhere around 40, at some point the doctor's going to use what I call the B word. Uh, That's the bifocals. Uh, so you're going to be having the bifocal discussion. And then at some point, and it's different for each person, they're going to have the conversation with the C word, which is the cataract thing. Mm. Well, as you're, everybody gets cataracts, okay? And for those who are not aware, everybody's going to have cataracts. 
it's a very gradual thing. You're kind of your night vision goes to heck and you get more flares and you lose color. Doctors, eye doctors tend to want to wait until you can't drive before they want to do cataract surgery. That, that can't remember if I've told you the story about the doctor when we had that conversation. Mm-mm. He Mm-mm. said, well, you know, one of these days, you, one of these days you're going to have to have uh, cataract surgery. I said, really? I said, yeah. And this went off like two or three years ago, back for your annual checkup. And finally I said, let me ask you, if you, when you get cataract surgery, <clears throat> is that something like you get it and it's good for 10 years and you have to redo it? He said, well, no, no, no. I said, so once you get it, it's good forever, right? And your, your eyes are just going to be better. He said, well, yeah. I said, do you know what I do? He said, well, no. I said, well, I shoot guns, I shoot cameras, and I fly airplanes. I said, so you're telling me that I could have better vision right now, and that better vision would last me the rest of my life? He said, well, yeah. I said, well, why aren't we doing that right now? I said, oh, okay. So we did, and it did, and your vision gets is so much better. It's probably the most successful surgery that being done today, cataract surgery. So for as you get toward that age and your eye doctor starts talking about that, don't let it go till you can't drive, for heaven's sakes. Anyway, my thoughts. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> sure. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, if there was ever like a drive-by surgery, this one is it. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, you lean your, your head in the window of the drive through window and they do the surgery and you leave. It's almost that fast. <laughs> Is it weird? Is it's, it intimidating uh, at all? I mean, you're awake for it, right? If, oh, yeah. If it doesn't scare the heck out of you, you're crazy. Uh, okay. you know, they're cutting on your eyeballs. But uh, it's just so good wow. what they do now. And here's the other thing that's very cool. For shooters, uh, they can correct your vision when they do cataracts. Because they're, they're basically taking out the lens inside your eyeball and putting another lens in. Right. Well, they can do the correction at the same time. Wow. Now, some people actually will do like a near near vision and a far vision on the two eyes. Uh, mm. As a pilot, we don't do that. But if you're going to do that and you're a shooter, <sighs> make sure, if, particularly if you're a shotgun shooter, you want the far vision to be on the side that you shoulder the gun on. Because if you can't focus out far, you're not going to be able to hit a target out there. And, you know... If, I wouldn't do it. I I wouldn't do the one eye close and one eye distance. Yeah, I just, it seems kind of asking for trouble. I mean, you really have to learn to adapt so, to that, wouldn't you? But some it's people, weird, but everybody says everybody says it works. Yeah, some people wear ca- um, contact lenses that way now. Several people that I mm-hmm. know do that, and even some people that are shooters wear them like that, specifically right. for that. I know reason. people that wear. One, I know people that wear one contact mm-hmm. for that reason, just one. So they could have the near vision and then have a far vision. I was actually talking to somebody. She said, yeah, I just I get them that way, and I make the contacts last twice as long. I just wear one of them. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay. Doesn't make sense. I, that, it's not working for me, but there's something I miss. Probably it, has, it goes back to bulletproof leaves. <laughs> That's where we're going with this. There are the old callback. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's bulletproofleaves.com. Quick, run out there and grab that domain name. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. I don't know. I um, the, the other thing I've been doing, I was going to ask you guys about this. And Jim, you and I talked about this before, of the whole Cooper color code and how difficult it is to be aware all the time. You know, we go through our lives, and sometimes you're just not plugged into everything that's going on around you. And I do the same thing, and all of a sudden I realize, I don't know who's sitting around me. I don't know who's walked by me. I just, I was zoning out. So at the movie theater, I'm trying, I'm actually looking, leaning forward and looking left and looking right and just saying, who's sitting in the row? You know, what do they look like? What kind of people are sitting here? I actually catch fl- I- flack from a couple of my buddies for like, man, what, what are you so paranoid about? You know, you're looking over your shoulder and said, well... Actually, I'm not paranoid. I'm aware of what's going on. And to me, it's almost like a sport. Like you're talking about the movie theater. If I'm walking mm-hmm. through a mall, I'm looking where I'm walking, obviously. But I'm, I'm looking up ahead and off to the left, right, see anybody that's shaky. I don't want trouble. It's, I'm not looking for trouble. I'm looking to avoid trouble. Stay out of its way. Yeah, yeah. and if you see something develop, I mean, you know, I've been around long enough. You've kind of got to go with your gut on some stuff. And 
you know, I, I just want to know what's what's happening. And when I'm not, like you said, when you're, when you're zoned out or something, I'm like, wow, something could have just happened there, and I had no clue. Somebody could have mm-hmm. grabbed my kids. Somebody could have done this. Could have done that. And I, I don't personally view it as paranoid. I, it's it's almost like a sport to me to to be aware and to uh, participate in in self preservation. So you you are wearing those little bicyclist like rear view mirrors on your glasses when you're walking around. Yeah, so and, you I, see and behind I, you? I twitch a lot, but yeah, I'm working yeah, through okay. it. Sure, makes sense to me. <laughs> Not a problem. Aye, aye. I, I did have to ask the people uh, just down the road from us to stop talking during the movie. How'd that go over? Aye, aye, aye. Well, fine. I just got up and walked over and leaned in close to him and said, "Excuse me, could you not talk during the movie?" And then I turned around and went back to my seat. Sweet. And they were quiet. They were quiet the rest of the movie. Hmm. But they were just over there, just chatting and having a great old time. Just you know, thinking, no. We paid money to come here. You want to go talk? There's the lobby out there. I also am not at all uh, shy about telling somebody to put their phone down and quit using their phone during a movie. Yeah, well, you Which know, is ba- maybe one of the reasons that people don't want to go to the movie with me. <laughs> <laughs> that and you're always pulling the vices out of your wife's purse. <laughs> here, let me give you advi- some advice. No, that's Big not what one. I meant. <laughs> we're, yeah. talking, we're talking about situational awareness. And the flip side of that is, I'm really surprised at how many people walk around totally clueless, ear pods in. They're jogging down the road, or they're walking through the mall with ear pods, and they're going through a shaky part of the parking lot. It's like, are you for real? You have no idea how vulnerable you are. And it's not like I'm some sicko looking to take advantage of somebody. I just, I know how sickos think, and that's a prime target there. Gal's walking out to her car at the mall after work, got ear earbuds in. It doesn't even have to be listening to a radio. It can just be eyes down focusing on right, a text. Right, right. I mean, we've got distracting yeah. driving and all that everywhere. And and people that are involved in a big text conversation aren't paying attention to what's going on around them either. No, no, they're not. Which brings me to my subject I talked about, what I was going to mention, is cybersecurity. Ah. I have a friend who is a very high-level person at a very well-known computer company. He has, like, every degree of security clearance that's known. And he was telling me, he says, look, he says, you need to not depend upon the security of your Wi-Fi. Uh, He has a separate Wi-Fi network for his computers at his house, for the TVs, that like access Netflix Mm -hmm. and for the phones that he's using those to access the internet, three different Wi-Fi's. He he actually has like eight different Wi-Fi setups, but I, he said, but three would probably be enough. Here's what he explained to me. I never thought about this because he, he he knows what I do at all. He said, pedophiles use other people's Wi-Fi's. That's what they do to access uh, child porn. He said, so, and he said, well, I got a, a password. Not, most passwords are lousy. There's actually a couple of websites you can go to and test your password. And I went to one and checked one of the passwords, and they said, yeah, we could break that in like two minutes Wow! Uh, using this software. And he said, what they do is they have this software. They could break your password. They're in. They'll go in and download a few thousand pictures of kitty porn. They're gone. The track record of that goes straight to your house. Mm. And the first time you know about it is when the SWAT team kicks in the doors, puts the handcuffs on you, and if you live through the initial encounter, and if you are then able to actually get it undone in court and you're proved to be not guilty, you're still the guy who was on the front page with the handcuffs on as a child porn, and you never get rid of it. Yeah, that sticks with you forever. Okay. Or imagine somebody who wants to set you up. So anyway, his point was use really strong passwords and don't use the easy setup security stuff that comes on your Wi-Fi network. Actually go in and set it up the right way. Manual, Do a little yeah. research. You know, Find out about you know, what actually works. What, what is your password, it was, by the it, way, Tom? It's uh, gun talk. Is it? Well, that's simple. So I, th- yeah. I thought that was very secure. I thought gun talk would work very well. I just don't understand. <laughs> Nobody will ever get that. Jeez. Nobody will get that. That's right. Um, anyway, just I kind of passed that along, and we're always talking about just being safe in various things and going, huh, well, that's one I never thought of. Yeah, I was looking into uh, some stuff actually for credit cards and stuff to protect. 
And evidently, mm-hmm. if you go to, you know, Panera Bread to have lunch or whatever, or Tim Hortons to have a cup of coffee, and you're on your public Wi-Fi, you're really susceptible to somebody sitting two two de- tables down that's got a laptop and you have no clue that they're they're into Basically, your computer and never use public Wi-Fi Correct. ever. Correct. You, you know, use your cell phone connection, pay for the extra data, whatever, but never use public Wi-Fi. Another one he said was, look, he says don't. He says he doesn't think you ought to be using online banking. He said if you do want to use online banking, you need to have a separate computer set up that does nothing but that. It never is used for email. It never has a thumb drive plugged into it. You open it, you do your online banking, you close it. That's it. The thing is, it's like we're thinking, oh, that sounds paranoid, except that that's what this guy does. That's his business all day long. He works with Homeland Security and FBI and everybody else. And, you know, three-letter agencies that we don't even know exist. Right. That's what he does. Yeah, you're only he paranoid until you're things. not. Well, yeah, it's one of those deals. Is we just don't know about that stuff. So in the realm of just trying to help people be safe, not just with guns, but in everything, Think about that, and also just think about, um, you know, we talked about swatting. Uh, somebody could go in, access your Wi-Fi in your house, and make online threats. And it gets tracked back to your house, and now you have been swatted digitally. So I think we're going back to written paper and mail and stamps. That's all there is to it. Wow. <laughs> That's very deep. we got to get Michael back in here. I think we should make uh, Mr. Spiderweb tree of life kind of thing, whatever he was, mm-hmm. a regular feature here. I would think so, yeah. He did, he did sound mellow, though, didn't he? Yeah, well, well yeah. Well, go ahead and say it. It's okay. You can say it. No, he he was relaxed. He was California-ish, casual, laid back. Yeah, more, he was. More power to him. I wouldn't want him guarding me or any of my belongings or family. I just like it that he said he didn't carry a firearm when he was a security agent guard, and he thinks he was more successful. With that, I'm thinking, yeah, well, with his mindset, that's probably best that he didn't carry a gun. Yeah, well, I was curious why he would go through all the testing and everything if he had no desire to carry one. It's like, you're going to have to get tested and get approved so you can carry a gun, but we're not going to make you carry a gun. But we'll pay for all your schooling and classes. I'm sure that they paid for that, I would think. just seems kind of odd to me. I don't know. It's it's also possible that absolutely none of that was true. (laughs) That's true. You mean they don't have bulletproof plants, Tom? You're shattering my whole Yes, concept. they do. They're called big trees with big trunks, and you stand behind them, and it works really, really well. But only for so long. You ever shot down a tree? Yes, I have, actually. To yes. get to it his works, truck. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! Bam! She's been waiting to use that one all day. Oh, my God. <laughs> but bump bump Sorry, Jim. And today you're supposed <laughs> no, to be you're paid not. too. You know that, don't you? You're supposed to be. You're not sorry in the least. <laughs> that was a good one. Good one. There you go. When it fell. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Did it make a noise? Did it oh. land on your truck? <laughs> it landed on me, I think. That was a great one, Shell. <laughs> So, so what we're going to do is go out and find his truck, like with the tree trunk growing through it. It'd be one of those hard form things where the, the we have, forest is taking it over. We have two of those right now, actually. Oh, Funny you should mention. <laughs> All right. Funniest one I ever saw was in Turnigan Arm in Anch- or outside of Anchorage, Alaska. There was a car wrapped around a tree. Uh, it had been blown there by an avalanche. Oh. And wow. it swept it up and just hit it and wrapped it around a tree and and it's kind of like everybody left it there because, like, why wouldn't you? What are you going to do with it now? It's, kind <laughs> it's of, just kind of... It's a f- work of art. Work of art. And it also was a really good example of why you pay attention when they talk about avalanche zones in that area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have gone all around the world on this one today. So mm-hmm. There you go. All right. So this week, I am going to be investigating lasers for my everyday carry guns, which, of course... That's the easy part. The hard part is you also have to then get a new holster. Correct. You know, well, it's not always. Depends. With if it's a Crimson Trace, you would not have to get a new holster. Right. But if she's a she's a rail bolt on type. You're. Yep. If it's a rail bolt on, then you got to get a new holster. So unless it's I an mean, LCP more. with a big monster laser on, then you use your 1911 holster and some shims. <laughs> get off cheap. Because security should be cheap. 
Wasn't Shem one of the Three Stooges? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, no, that was Shemp. Shemp. I, oh, 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 I get confused by that. So, I'm. you know what this is all leading me to, don't you? It's like back to the 1911. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just... I, well, it's winter time. You can do that now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to use different ammo, right? <laughs> well... Your winter ammo. You know. That's right, because people are wearing bulletproof leaves. <laughs> Wait, I'm confused. <laughs> Oh, my God. It's, it's bizarre. I think it's time to go. Yes. <laughs> that was Michelle. Michelle, don't leave. Don't leave. Bye. <laughs> hmm. I, I thought we'd managed to run her off. Darn. <laughs> All right. We're, we're going to have to cut this off because we have nowhere left to go. I just, and every subject matter I think of beyond this, it's just more bizarre, which is a... So a factor yeah. of us. So people. welcome back, Michelle. Your first week back. Look at look what you bring us. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Thanks a lot. Yeah. All right. So, you sure you don't need another vacation? <laughs> I hear Fresno is oh, nice this time okay. of year. Okay. Well. <laughs> there's options. <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. You guys be safe. Check your six and be alert out there. All right. Be all good. Right. Take care, Tom. Tell your friends about the Gun Talk After Show, a more informal setting featuring Tom, Michelle, and Jim commenting on topics that are important to you. Available on iTunes and other podcatchers and the Gun Dealio smartphone app for iPhone and Android.